Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be exploring the multiplication rules for probability uh, and specifically focusing on independent events in this video. The next video will be on dependent events, but um, basically starting to look at events that happen in sequence. So these would be things like flipping a coin, you often see problems like this, flipping a coin and rolling a die, or uh, you know like spinning a spinner and, uh, and drawing a lottery ticket or something like that. But uh, two events and, and how they are related to one another in terms of probabilities. But, but whether or not these events are independent or they are dependent is a very, very important focus of today. So we're going to start by looking at what we mean by independent events, especially in this video. We say independent events. Okay, so we say two events, A and B, are independent events if the fact that A occurs does not affect, affect the probability of B occurring. So the very technical definition of this is two events are independent if the first thing that happened doesn't affect the probability of the second thing happening. But I mean, like everyday speak, we would basically say these are two things, whatever I did first didn't affect how the second thing happened. So let's take, for instance, the flipping of a coin twice. The first flip would not affect the outcome of the second flip, and so we would say these two flips are independent of one another. Or believe it or not, no matter how many times people want to argue this, like game two of the World Series, say, does not affect game three, you know, maybe people will argue psychologically, but each game's outcome is independent of the other game. So we say, okay, uh, examples of this would be like rolling a die and getting a six, and then rolling a second die and getting a three. These two events would be independent of one another. Or drawing a card from a deck and getting a queen, putting it back into the deck, and then drawing a second card and getting a queen. These two events would also be classified as, as uh, independent. And the key words there being like replacing it. Okay, we do with and without replacement. So... Uh, we're going to take a look at an example of a, of a situation in which we're doing things in sequence now and, and kind of ease our way into the multiplication rules, but it involves a coin and tossing it twice. Now, one thing I want to mention here is this. If we toss a coin twice, that's the same thing as tossing two separate coins once. Okay, but we're just looking at the outcomes, and we know that these two events are independent of one another. The first flip will not affect the second flip, so they're independent. We say uh, a coin is tossed twice. The probability of getting two heads in a row is one half times one half equals one fourth, or uh, 0.25, uh, or 25 percent probability. But it, it comes from this. We basically say uh, four different possible outcomes for this to happen. We say we get a heads heads, heads tails, tails heads, or a tails tails. But out of these four possibilities, you know, it's clearly one of these is the only one that gives us uh, two heads in a row. So we say one out of four is this probability we saw up here, but you'll notice that I wrote one half times one half, and the reasoning behind this is this. Um, if you wanted to uh, evaluate for probability heads and heads, the key word here being and, uh, the word of the day and, uh, translates to multiply. Okay? It means that we can take this compound probability of more than one thing, probability of heads and heads, and split it up into a bunch of simple probabilities and just multiply them wherever we saw an and. So probability of the first thing, heads, times probability the second thing, heads, this is where we get our half times a half as a fourth. So basically, um, the rule that we're going to be highlighting in this video for independent events is this. It says when two events are independent of one another, we'll call these events A and B, then the probability of both occurring is this rule down here in the bottom right. We say probability A and B can be rewritten as probability A times probability B, where and is our multiply sign. And now we're just evaluating for simple probabilities. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of this. So we say example one. Let's consider that we flip a coin and then we roll a die. Two very independent events, seeing as how the coin flip is not going to affect the probability of how the die is being rolled or what it'll come out to be. So it says find the probability of getting a head on a coin and a four on the die. So key things here. First of all, you always read the last sentence of a problem because it's telling you exactly what it wants you to find, typically. So we say probability of getting a head on the coin and a four on the die. So we say first thing we want to do is write down the probability we're finding. So we say head on the coin, and four on the die. So now this is, see, this is good, and that is because we see that we could use our rule that we've just uh, kind of come across here uh, and rewrite this as probability of the first thing, which is heads, times probability of a four on the die. And so now we end up with these probabilities here. We say probability heads, well, that's a one and two. Uh, two possible outcomes, one of them heads, you know, and, and one outcome is a four, out of six total possible outcomes. So we say multiplying these straight across, we can't reduce them, see. We get 1 12th, which is approximately 0 0.0833 repeating, which is about 8.33%. So uh, basically, you'll notice that uh, flipping a coin is not that hard to flip a heads, you know, it's like one in two chance. And, and rolling a die, it's not that hard to get a four. I guess, you know, you got a 17% chance here, you got a one in six chance. But to do these things in order, to say, like, what's harder, to flip a heads? 
to roll a four or to flip a heads on your coin and then immediately afterwards roll a four. And you'll see that the more, the more things you have to satisfy to make that thing come true, the more things you do in sequence, the harder this becomes. And so that's why multiplication really makes sense as an operator here because, uh, let's face it, all probabilities, which that's what this thing here is and what this thing here is, we know all probabilities occur between zero and one, including uh, zero and one. This is true. So if that's true, basically we're going to be multiplying a bunch of probabilities together, and every time you multiply like proper fractions together, they get more and more small. You know, they get smaller. So we say the more things you try to do in sequence, it makes sense that each one of these probabilities we multiply reduces uh, the probability of that occurring because it's harder to do. So this last example here, we'll just take a quick look at it. It says a bag contains three red balls, two blue balls, and five white balls. Uh, a ball is selected and its color is noted. Find the probability of each of the following things. So when I say, okay, so a ball is selected, its color noted, I meant to write, and then is replaced. Is replaced. And this is, you know, this is kind of an important thing because it doesn't affect the overall sample space. But if we were to draw out the sample space here, we'd say it seems that we have red, uh, red, blue, and white. And so I'm going to try to draw this a little bit to scale. We said white had 5 out of these 10 here, and equals 10. Oops. And we say blue uh, looks like 2 blue, and uh, so 3 red. So a little bit drawn to scale here, but we say here's our sample space. These are all mutually exclusive events, since you can't be a red and a blue ball, a white time, whatever. We say selecting 2 blue balls. So now selecting 2 blue balls, that means getting a blue and then getting a blue. So we say probability of blue and blue. So we're just falling back on a rule here. I know it seems silly to write this out, but we do want to do this. We say probability of blue. Now we put this ball back. So we say it doesn't affect the second ball, um, its probability of happening, since we didn't remove a ball from the back. So probability blue times probability blue. We say what is the probability of getting a blue? Well, we see over here that we have two blue out of ten total, so we say two out of ten. So now once we draw this ball, we put it back in the bag, which means this 2 out of 10 probability still holds for this second blue because we had put that blue back. So we say 2 tenths and 2 tenths, it's always a good idea to reduce if you can before you multiply your fractions. So 1 fifth times 1 fifth, uh, we wind up with here 1 25th, which is equal to 0.04, which is 4%. So basically, a 4% chance of drawing out, say, a, a blue and then a blue. Uh, we say, well, how about a blue and then a white? Well, now look at the picture of your sample space here. We say blue is 2 out of 10, but, uh, you know, white's really highly represented. So I would suspect that drawing a blue and then getting a white would be pretty good chances. Uh, uh, so let's take a look at this. So we say, okay, so probability, blue, and white. So we get probability first thing times probability of the second thing equals, now probability blue, we said 2 out of 10. Oops. two out of 10, and then we say, okay, so probability white, white would be five out of 10, and these things reduce here, so we say one fifth, one fifth, and one half. Uh, one fifth times one half is one in 10, so we get about a 10% chance of getting this. Let me go back and say 0 0.10 equals 10% chance. So uh, much better chances of doing that than what we did the first time. And then last but not least, we say selecting a red ball and then a blue ball, well, a red, and then a blue, so probability red and blue. And basically, I'm going to finish this one out here, but you get the gist at this point. We say the word and in our probability. If we can write that first probability down by reading the last sentence of the problem, seeing what they want, probability red uh, is 3 out of 10, uh, then we can split it up using a rule and just multiply this out. So we say probability blue, so 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10 is 1 fifth. We've seen this. Um, nothing else cross reduces, so we have 3 and 1 on top, 3 times 1 is 3, and then uh, 10 and 5 on bottom. So 3 fiftieths is 0.066% chance. So that's that. Uh, but just know this, I'm going to show one last slide here, but this concept of the multiplication rule can be extended to however many events we have happening in sequence. So it just may happen to say, you know, what's the likelihood I flip a coin a hundred times? We have to write probability, say, like heads and heads, hand heads and heads, you know, that kind of scheme if we're interested in all heads. But basically, probability of A and B and C and, you know, so on and so forth to the kth event, all of these ands can be separators as multipliers. And then we'll just do a bunch of simple probabilities uh, for the rest of these. So 
Uh, two uh, quick examples here. I'll leave example number five for the audience to solve. We'll do number four together. But it says a poll found that 46% of Americans say they suffer great stress at least once a week. Man, I think I suffer more. But it says if three people are selected at random, find the probability that all three they'll suffer great stress at least once a week. So now, one thing I want to point out is this. They've already, they, I've already given you a probability on this problem, 46%. Okay, so you just need to recognize this, and also you need to want to work with it as a decimal. This is the most convenient way to calculate is with decimal form. So let's take a look at this. Um, what we're really looking for is this last sentence where it says probability that all three will suffer great stress at least once a week. So we say, really what we're saying is we want stress and say stress and stress. And according to our rule up top here, consider this, the first person we draw out that is, say, stressed or not, they do not affect the mood of the second person. So these are independent events, the drawing of these people. But we say this same thing as probability of stress times probability of stressor times probability of stressor. And in each one of these instances, we already know the probability of stress, great stress, at least once a week is 46% of the population. So we say just multiplying these out here, we say 0.46 to the third power. Luckily, we've got a calculator here, 0.46. And uh, we'll go power of 3. So about a 9.73% chance, 0 0.0973. So we'll write this down here. It's 0 0.0973, which is about a 9.73% chance. So not very good. Even though it's almost half of the population, you know, to draw out three in a row is, is a little bit difficult to do. So anyways, um, quick video on... Uh, independent events with multiplication rules.